All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you could use the Nearpod rhythm lessons in a couple of different ways. So I'm going to walk you through that now. When you download the file, you'll get a PDF that looks just like this. And you'll see right here this click to download. That will prompt you to log into Nearpod and it will add a copy of the lesson exactly as I showed to you today to your personal Nearpod library. So since I already have it in mind, I'm just going to pull it up and show you, but yet you would click there to download it. So once you're inside of Nearpod, uh, it might look something like this. I have all my lessons in here. I'm just going to walk you through this first one. All right, so once you have it in your library, you notice that when you hover over it, <clears throat> it gives you a couple of different options for live participation or student paste. And depending on the level of account you have with Nearpod, you may be able to do the student paste, but just double check with your um, system administrator on that. Um, but let's take a look at it in edit mode. And what I included in every lesson is a teacher guide. And that's the first thing here. And then you'll notice these other activities. I also have a Nearpod and Canvas in integration tip sheet for, for you as well. Um, before you want to use these with your students, you'll definitely want to delete those. And to do that, you can click there and then hit delete slide. But <clears throat> I'm not going to do that for now. There are these draw it activities, which is where you could have your students writing in counts and then they submit that to you. So I'm going to show you what that looks like as if this was a live teaching situation. Okay, so on the left side of the screen here, this is what you'll see in teacher view. And then over here on the right side of the screen, this is what you would see in a student view. So in this first rhythm lesson, if I click start live participation, it gives me the, a couple of options to share with my students how to join the lesson. So the first way is to use this code. Uh, but you can see there's other ways. You can email um, your students. You can share it to, right to Google Classroom or Microsoft Teams. Um, I found that giving them the direct link is probably going to be the easiest way to do that. Um, you could, in essence, use this in a live setting as well if you're face-to-face, -face, if your students have their own devices and they could follow along and do this activity together. So I'm just going to give you just a quick demo by typing in this code here. So once your students typed in the code, it'll bring them here where they'll need to type in their name and then click join session. Now you could run this alongside a Google, Te a Google Hangout or Teams meeting and essentially do your live, what you would do for your live face-to-face -face instruction, but with these interactive slides as well. So this first part, this is what you would delete. This is just a slideshow for the teacher with some tips on how you could use it. So I'd encourage you to check that out. Then this was, uh, you can see as I move the slideshow, it moves the student view as well. So if this was the first exercise you're working together with your students on, you can see it says awaiting drawing for the student. What your students can do over here is they can fill in these activities. So in this case, I'm asking them to draw a quarter note. They can use the pen tool and change the color. And if your students are using touch devices, they can use their fingers or they can use a mouse to draw in their notes or anything that we're asking them to do here. Now you'll notice here too, it says type or draw because they can actually use a type tool. You see how I brought a, a box up there and they can click and drag and move it around to where it needs to go. And if I click this, I'm gonna go ahead and do number and you can change the size by using this little slider here and they can resize the box and um, that's another way they can fill these in so um, all of the activities in each of the lessons have contain activities just like this so I'll kind of scroll you through here the first one um, is just sort of having the students write in the counts now something else you could do as it if you're doing this in a live situation, you, the students could fill it in and then you could help correct them um, and make sure they understand the correct counts as they're writing this in for the activity. Another thing you could do is you can actually show a student's, a particular student's answer to all the students so they can see a, a good version 
if you're doing that. So I, there's a lot of really neat ways to use the Nearpod in a distance learning situation. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that for some use for, for your classes. Now for all of the rhythm lessons, what you're gonna find are the write in the counts activities and the rhythm charts that you can use all of them in there, but I've, I've put it in, I've put it in together for you so that you can kind of adapt it to uh, your system. And th with the idea that there's no better teacher for your students than you. So you can, another way you can use this, and I go over it in more detail in the teacher guide, but if you, if you do have access to the student paced version, you can upload videos of yourself teaching the rhythm concepts and then going through with your students, how to write the counts and say the counts for each of the rhythm concepts and then they can work through the activities at their own pace so uh, take a look at that and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me i hope you found this helpful and can use it in your teaching for this year